Ray is having the time of his life, he just said. Woo! Yeah. Ride the ridge, baby. Yeah. That's what it feels like to build a house right there. All right, guys, welcome back to episode 10 of Building a House Start to Finish. This week, we're going to do some windows and some finish, fascia and soffit. Let's get going. To start the process of installing these finished fascia boards over the sub fascia boards, we install a block on the roof surface. This gives us a positive stop to bump the fascia board up to. After the board is installed, we remove these blocks and then patch the screw hole with some flashing tape. We've used a lot of different materials for a finished fascia, including cedar or just wrapping the subfascia with pre-painted aluminum, but in this case we're using a 2x8 pressure treated board as the finished fascia, and we're using kiln dried treated, that way it doesn't shrink and we can actually paint you know, or stain it right away. Once I sneezed in it, I'm like, what do I do now? We're using 3 inch T25 deck screws to fasten the fascia boards every 16 inches. Eric, you get down dude. No man, I got a couple <laughs> more screws. Ah, every time. As the rain started to come down, Arlo decided to make a roof over his window instead of rolling it up because he didn't want it to get hot in his truck. Why don't you just roll your window up? What's your name? Jason. Jason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I had a guy. His name was... Oh, are you that guy? Dude, you've been gone for like so long. I forgot I you even worked here. Look who's back. Hey, Bob. What's going on? Looking pretty tan. Yeah, a little, little bit. I thought you said your arm was in a cast. Um, It was this kind of cast. <laughs> I'm already sweating. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this much longer. <laughs> How was it without me? Oh, man. It was nice. Peaceful. Didn't have all Wait, <laughs> what? I mean, I miss you. It was just, there was no yelling. Next, it was time to finish closing in this structure with the windows that we had ordered from Jennings Builder Supply. And it actually takes a long time to get windows sometimes. These ones took about five weeks. Just heads up if you're doing your own project. First, each window opening is prepped for the windows. This includes, for our method, cutting the house wrap back one inch from the sides of the opening to apply caulk directly to the OSB, and also cutting a flap at the top that will lap down over our window flashing. And this is what we used for the window pan flashings. Thanks, Jason. Good job, buddy. First, the pan flashing is installed over the sill of the window. It then wraps down over the face of the wall and adds an extra layer of protection to this flat surface. And like most peel and stick tapes, if this stuff sticks to itself, it's done. After patching this in with a new piece of tape, I was able to roll the entire surface and then stretch this corner around to make a nice tight seal. And this is the huge advantage of flexible tape. You can stretch it around outside corners like this without having to cut the tape like you would have to with a more rigid type material. Next, we applied a bead of caulk that will seal the window flange to the wall on this new construction type window. As Ray and I install the window from the outside, Arlo is on the inside to center the window up in the opening. He's also spacing the window up off of the window sill with spacers. In this case, we're using speed squares, and this is pretty common practice to not have the window actually sit tight to the window sill. Once the window is leveled, plumbed, and centered, it's time to nail it off. In this case, we're using roofing tacks, and these were way too long, but it's what we had. These are like two and a halfs. We could have used one and a halfs, and so a big handful of these will do a window. 
I do want to note that you could use a coil nailer like a roofing nailer to do this, but sometimes it blows these flanges to pieces, so we just like to hand nail them. That's a lot of nails. Last we used flashing tape on the sides and top, and we're using the drainage method here so we don't actually flash tape the bottom. This particular brand of windows comes with a protective film on the inside and the outside that we leave on until the project is done. Go. I don't even know. Man, this thing is not going to fit in here. And now you're telling me that I'm going to have to remodel this window opening for the window that is here? Dude, I only do remodeling on the weekends. So this was a window that I had changed, but I was looking at an older version of the window schedule as I framed the window. Whoops. So Jamie has to pull out the header, add a longer header, and add the jack studs back in to make this opening big enough for the window that I actually ordered. Yo, Bob, yo, yeah. what happened there? <laughs> you all right there? Dude, help me out. Ray Ray. Yo. Yo, let's put that window in the wall. Dude, this thing is kicking my butt. I don't know. Hey, window man, quit filming me and go do something. <laughs> <laughs> Jones, who put all these button caps on here, dude? Uh, oh my gosh, what an idiot I was. All right, I'll let you get go over here, Ray Ray. Here's the set of three windows that are in the upstairs loft. Those are next, and this is an amazing view up here since that tree has been cut. And that was a wrap on the windows. This process took one whole day. Next, it was time to prep the material for the soffits, which is the underside of the overhangs. On this house, we're using rough sawn 3 8 plywood, and we've used a lot of different materials here on different houses, including aluminum and hardy board. We stained all of this material with a solid color stain, which kind of looks like paint, but actually it's a stain, so it soaks into the material instead of drying on the surface. We were able to use it through a sprayer because it's thicker than regular stain, almost like a paint. We coated this soffit material three times on the ground so we wouldn't have to get up on a ladder later and do it upside down. And I got a little bit on Jason while I was at it. Dude, I am never helping Perkins paint again. Why? What's the matter? Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thanks, bub. <laughs> you know what they say? That's one way to do it. Once we were done painting, I cleaned out the paint sprayer and it was at this moment we realized we had the perfect misting machine for a hot day. This two inch wide metal louver vent is installed on the eave side and on the upper side of the roof to let air vent above the insulation to keep the roof deck cooler. So I was just admiring our work here on the soffits. And then I realized there's supposed to be can lights in there. So we're gonna stop right there and let the electrician uh, do his thing. I guess we got a little excited to see our finished product there and got ahead of ourselves again here. We installed this soffit material using 18 gauge, 730 seconds, narrow crown, inch and a quarter, electro galvanized staples in this boss stitch nailer. And these things have amazing holding power for lots of different applications. I personally really like the look of this rustic wood on the underside of the soffits, and it really matches with our rustic modern theme for this home. In case you were wondering, this project of prepping the soffit material and installing it took one day with a crew size of three men. The next morning we went around and did our solid color stain on all of the fascia boards, which again were pressure treated but kiln dried, which is important because kiln dried wood will accept stain whereas non-kiln dried pressure treated wood is wet and it won't stain very well. 
For coating the fascia boards, I use this mini six inch whiz roller and I use these things for all kinds of stuff and I really like them. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Building a House Start to Finish here on the Modern Mountain Getaway. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more episodes coming up every week. Good night, Level. I'll see you in the morning. Stay tight. Hey Arlo, you're right, brake light is out.